This is Induced Fear, people. For this interview, I will be actually interviewing a ghost. Oh, shit. Turn into a cat. There's a force in all of us that science knows nothing about, the force of fear. Welcome, everyone, to Induced Fear. I'm your host, Oscar. And with me, I have my co-host, who has been missing for a while, my brother from the same mother, Alex. I've been missing? Yeah. Well, you've been oh, missing off the podcast. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that's my fault. Been busy with work. Yeah. And I then thought I was missing, be... missing, like, gone. No, no, you weren't. Because I texted you, like, every day or message. <laughs> so, yeah. But you just yeah, started a new job, back. so. Yeah. But now you're back. And now the people. I'm back, bro. This is your first time actually on the on the video and on the for camera, the YouTube. Yeah. yeah. I don't <laughs> like it. <laughs> no, it's fine. I'm nervous, but well, it's just the same. It's the same as a regular audio version. Um before this episode, you know, I had to have you come back, whether you are ready or not. Yeah. Because it's been two years. Two years for induced fear. Oh, yeah, dude. That's so cool, man. I literally told you when you started, I said, whatever you do, don't stop. Like, all it takes for these things is to just continue to be, like, consistent with it. And you have been, and it's freaking, it's coming out to be this great thing. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, I got you when you're not on, Tate hops on. Yeah. You know, as of late. When she doesn't hop on, you got the interviews and stuff. Yeah. That's what I like. Yeah, the interviews are consistent. Yeah, then I'm trying to do TikTok, trying to be a TikToker, trying to be a YouTuber with this this whole nonsense that we're doing here. Mm hmm. Uh, I have to constantly say, (laughs) I like, I have to constantly say at the end of it, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. That's good. That's that's part of the job. (laughs) I know. It's just different. <laughs> so, yeah, we started off um, me, you, Sess. We'd switch off every month, mm-hmm. like three and three on one topic. Then we were like, that's that's a little too um, too much focused on one subject for a long time, even though it was cool. Um, oh, because we were doing ghosts and then cryptids, and that's it, huh? Yeah, yeah. And then, but it would be like a month of like, what was our first episodes with me and Sess? It was um, haunted dolls. Annabelle. So we did yeah. like Annabelle, Poopa, the haunted doll. And then, then we read off like eBay listings. And then the next one came up was me and you for that second month. And it was UFOs and aliens. Mm hmm. So we did like Betty and Barney Hill um, when they first started talking about like uh, UFO disclosure. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And then then we we did our first (laughs) our first um, listener stories, I think. Yeah. Because we had somebody send in an abduction story. Dude, how many episodes do we have on on the what? Total. Oh my god. Um a, number, huh? a lot. No, I don't have a number. <laughs> like like forty eight around there. I don't know if I counted the same one twice or not, but it's around there. Forty six to like fifty. You don't think that's accurate? <laughs> you don't sound like maybe. I don't know. I, I honestly all. I honestly <laughs> don't know at all. I look high. No. My eyes are very squinty. Oh, I think that's just us in general. Yeah, I'm not high, guys. I just... (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, for those in audio, I don't even know what you're talking about. They can't even see that you're like... Oh, I thought it was just going to be a video. No, we both. (laughs) Oh, okay. See what happens when you're out of it? You don't know what's going on. But yeah, so we, we went through... Some changes in the show. Um, we've had, we brought on, 
interviews, our first being Roman of Beyond the Shadows. He he now does like um, um, Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul like content on TikTok. So he mm-hmm. moved from there. Um, but he was our first guest and we talked about paranormal investigations and all yeah. that stuff. Um, then we had like Davey from Calibri's come on. We've had Chaz, Chaz of the Dead, um, Seth Breedlove of Small Town Monsters, John Mars- Marshall, Jack McLean. McLean? How did I say it? I learned how to say it before the show, and then I completely forgot how to say it. Who came on to talk about a dogman encounter? We've had uh, Deb Marley of Marley's Ghost, Terry Cozier, so many. Um, Kyle to talk about hat man theories. Uh, we've had Bigfoot Anonymous Connor come on, which was a big episode. We have had Corey, who does our urban exploring. Um, I don't want to miss anybody. <laughs> Sims nerd. Yeah, the Sims nerd, Simon. We've had Greg Morrill of All the Weird. Uh, we've had Zach, Darth Ravens, also on YouTube. And then Phil with Exploring with Phil, also on the show. And those were the recent ones. But so many people mm-hmm. have come on. Oh, Sydney Spooks, why am I forgetting Ainsley? Who's become a friend of the show. Um, Just so many people. Hopefully I yeah. didn't forget anybody because then I'll feel like a jerk. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, we've had that. We've had a lot of people come on, which is awesome and tell their yeah. stories. From like dogman encounters to Bigfoot encounters to red eyed entity encounters to being cursed by a family member or someone close to the family. It's like different takes on like maybe you'll hear two, three, four ghost stories, but none of them are the same. It's like always like completely different kind of stories that you get, which is cool. Yeah, they're it keeps it interesting. Yeah, and then uh, especially with us, we have gone through so many different topics from haunted objects to UFOs, Betty and Barney Hill, which I know is one of your favorite episodes that yeah, we've I done. Love it. I love it. Um hauntings in places that we've lived or that we've been, so like Big Bear, um New York, mm-hmm. I don't know, Colorado here. Like, just a lot. Yeah. A lot of craziness. <laughs> yeah. And then now we're now we're moving on to YouTube stuff. Well, mainly, yeah, like, making, me on this end. Yeah, making uh, investigations and stuff. Yeah. Which yeah, is so oh. Cool. And good for... The, to tell you because we were talking about it last night which people didn't know but um i was telling you that i might investigate an old jail jailhouse yeah yeah yeah. i got the email back saying they do offer overnight investigation so i'm gonna be sweet do you know when that is no i have to book it but yeah that'll be that'll be coming to the channel i'd love to do that with you though well i guess we can plan it we can plan it for then. We that can work dope. something out and then, yeah, we'll do it like that. Yeah, we'll try that. But I really love to do that. <clears throat> as we have, or I have like rambled on with every single like person who has come on or like all the things we've talked about mm-hmm. out of all the episodes that we've had so far, <clears throat> which ones have been your favorite? I got a few, man. I was thinking of it going through the list. Um, like you said, Betty and Barney. I'm going to start with that one just because that one I mer- I remember vividly. Yeah. It was it was such a... And that was like... What did you say? Our fifth one? Our, our yeah, our fifth, fifth episode? episode. Yeah. Literally super early on. But that one was just so cool to me. 
especially because I never heard it, but I've seen it. Meaning <clears throat> when they did it on um, American Horror Story. Mm-hmm. They did their take on it. And then also in um, uh, Gravity Falls, they mentioned it. Mm-hmm. I can't remember how they, they Easter egged it in there, but um, when we were talking about it, right after, I think I went, went to go watch the show, and then I seen it in there. Or yeah, when I was no. researching, I think. Yeah, no, I no, because I told you, I told you during the episode because I knew you loved you loved Gravity oh, Falls. Oh yeah, that's right. So and then like, I looked hey, it up. <laughs> yeah, and then I went back and I I checked it out on the episode and I was like, holy shit, that's so sick. Yeah. But yeah, that's no, always been no, one of my favorites. Super cool episode. Well, especially because it had so much information with it, and then yeah. such detail. I think the detail is what like was the creep factor in it. Yeah. I was going to say that <laughs> when he's looking creepy. up, when he's looking up at yeah. the end, that and he's like, get back in the car. <laughs> mm-hmm. Stay there. We're coming to get time. you. Yeah. Okay. Now real quick, I was trying to hold off on this, but I can't anymore. Cause now we're talking about <laughs> UFOs and stuff and now I'm excited. Okay. So last night I've never seen anything like this. And it's probably freaking normal. I don't know. But we are we went for a walk. Me and Peyton went for a walk. And um, j- as soon as we're literally on our street, about to get back to the house, I see... Okay, so you know how shooting stars will, will just stream across the sky like white? Mm-hmm. Like you'll just see a white stream just go down yeah and it'll just fade okay that's how i normally see them and lately the sky's been super active i don't know why but it's been super active and so i've seen two shooting stars in the past like just this month or last month but last night it was the weirdest thing it was like it was going, but it was blue, like a baby blue light, and then it exploded forward into the white stream that you see. But it was like mm-hmm. a baby blue, like I don't know, like a, a like the shape that it would make for like a rocket or something, you know. When, when something's coming from, like in a movie, something's coming down to Earth. The outer layer that's around the yeah. object? Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's what it looked like. It was blue, like a baby blue. And then it exploded. And the blue kind of like went outwards and then shot like the white stream that you normally see. It was so trippy, dude. I've never seen anything like it. <laughs> I was like, I had chills. And then Peyton was looking down, so she didn't see it. But when I was explaining it to her, she was like, I have chills just you talking about it. It was yeah, so no, crazy. That, yeah, I don't know if that's a a meteor or or something, or maybe debris in the sky or something. Yeah, I've, yeah, I have no idea. I've never seen anything like it. <clears throat> but you do live out in the desert, so... I mean, the desert yeah. is known to have a bunch of weird stuff in the sky. So mm-hmm. that's pretty crazy, yeah, though. Someone, someone posted something like that, like, oh, did you see these lights? They were in the sky, and then they just disappeared. I didn't think anything of it, but um, there was a star that was, like, super random. It was the only star in the sky, and then right next to it was a shooting star that I saw. Hmm. And so I was staring at the star for the longest time, <laughs> just like waiting for something to happen. <laughs> but that that blue thing that was crazy, man. That was so trippy. Yeah, no. When we saw the lights in the sky over here recently, that mm-hmm. ended up being like the Starlink satellite, whatever from Elon Musk or whatever. But mm-hmm. it was just like this string of lights that were going across the sky. That's wild. And I was like, what the hell is that? 
and I have seen I have seen a meteor fall before um mm. when we lived in Arizona. Yeah. Uh yeah, it was like bright bluish green and it lit up the entire street. Mm-hmm. There when we yeah. lived right there in the meadows, Maricopa Meadows. But yeah, that's pretty crazy. And I, was I probably would have freaked out too. Um I don't know if it was just flying across the sky, but I know it was close enough to like light up the entire street. Because mine was like vertical. Like it was going across the sky. It wasn't going like down or at an angle. It was literally going okay. across. I don't know if it matters, but I'm sure people will correct me or let uh, at least like educate me, but I've never seen anything like it. <laughs> and I've no, seen a lot. Weirdly, I've seen a lot of shooting stars or, or meteors or whatever. Yeah, but I've never seen something like that. That was crazy. Well, that's a good little uh, anecdote <laughs> to add on to UFO. Yeah. Onto the UFO end. Yeah, it was crazy because uh, I was thinking about it. What I was talking about when you had mentioned he was looking in the sky, I was thinking about it, and then um, I was like, "Man, maybe I should hold it off until the end." I was like, "I can't. I forgot to tell him last night." So. <laughs> <laughs> It was crazy. Well, that's dope. That's dope. Yeah. So, what well, is your I, what is your other one besides the the Betty and Barney Hill? Um, one of the a little more recent ones. Uh, damn, I had two. It was uh, the drug lords and witches. Okay. Yeah. Right. That one was cool too. That one was super cool. Um. That one was cool to me. One, one because it was part of, I mean, our culture. No, we're not yeah. the most Mexican people out there, but like, we're still Mexican. <laughs> yeah, we're just, so we were cool born to, in America. <laughs> yeah, it was still cool to to read up on that stuff though, and just crazy yeah, to yeah. learn, you know, that the cops were in on it too, like doing that stuff too, yeah, and sacrificing and stuff like that. Yeah, I think I shared the pictures too of the 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 ritual like shrines they had built. In yeah. The area. Oh, when we talked about Santa Muerte, right here. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, because the town was uh, everybody was like worshiping in their own kind of way, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like the drug like people were offering or... like things to the statue, and then you had like mm-hmm. people killing. For offerings, yeah. So, yep. So, yeah, that one, and that one was crazy. Killing animals and stuff to oh, yeah. for power and stuff like that, or protection. Yeah, that one, that yeah. was crazy. Um, what else one was there that you said? I know you said there was another one. Was it uh, the time the time slips one? Oh, the time slips, and also the the possession. Oh yeah, the possession. That's probably one of my favorites. Yeah, so the time slips was super cool, super interesting. Um, it was the the hotel, the couple stays at the hotel, and yeah. then and then they they're coming down that same path again another time. Like, was it a couple years or what was the time? Yeah, they because they stayed there while they were on holiday, and then mm-hmm. decided they wanted to go stay there again next time they were on holiday, and. Yeah. Yeah. It just wasn't even there. Yeah, it didn't exist. It, like anymore. never existed. Yeah. <laughs> and the thing about it was inside the hotel, if you guys didn't hear the episode, was it was all like old timey, like what year would you say it was in there? Well, there was no electricity, there was no Yeah. Like there was nothing to say that it was modern at all. They almost yeah, thought they like... had walked into somebody pretending to be like old timey. Yeah, it was candles and stuff. There was candles, no, the people, the no way people light. dressed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and that I feel was like, a wild did, one. Did they react to, to their cell phone? Um, I, don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't think so. I don't think they pulled it out. They were just like, hey, we just need a room to, to stay. Hmm. But anyways, yeah, the, the, they tried again, and it was just not there at all. And so um, that was one. And then the airplane. 
I can't remember the name, but just the person was like crashing. Yeah, pilot. Falling out of the sky. And as they're falling out of the sky, they're like terrified and wondering like when they're going to hit the ground because they can't see because the clouds and stuff, right? And then they get a glimpse of an airport and they notice a few key things like one of the people's uniforms and then uh, markings or paint job on a plane. Yeah, and certain stuff like specific that. stuff. Yeah, and then later on, the person's at the airport, right? And then, yeah. and then he, he notices like about all the the changes that they're making. Yeah, like the the paint job to the plane. He sees them getting done, and they got new new outfits coming out and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, that so one was, was... that's why they called. It, that's why we put it on the episode because it was a time slip. Like if you went sort of in the future and saw that. Yeah, no, that one was, that one was a popular one along with the, the hotel one. Um, Mm -hmm. But yeah, when we were diving into time slips, I was just like, man, I couldn't even, I think my, my mind would break if I like somehow slipped in time. Mm Mm-hmm. Because you'd be like trying to convince not just yourself, but like everybody else. Yeah. Like no, exactly. this happened. And you wouldn't be able to explain it. Oh, no, that one was that one was is also one of my favorites. Um, and then the possession one. I think when we do possession because that one was like possession mixed with true crime. A guy who yeah. who was left with with three demons being madness, murder. And I'm still mad about that. <laughs> so, something else. Like three of the worst things ever. Oh, yeah, it was violence. Up. Oh, violence, so violent. Murder and... Uh, madness or something like that. Mad- yeah, something like that. Yeah. But he does horrible well, things. I don't know if we're able to has, describe. What, 50? 50 demons? Yeah, so like 50-something demons, 40-something demons. Yeah, like a weird him. number. A lot of demons, and they took out all of them. Except for the three worst ones. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And he ends up, he ends up like killing his family. I won't go into like the details of it because like, I don't know if YouTube will kind of strike that. Yeah. Um, But if you want to, you can listen to the possession of Michael Taylor on, you know, the audio, audio version. So just look it up anywhere, anywhere you get your podcast (laughs) from. Um, That one was crazy one. But yeah, we had all of these. I've had, I mean, with the recent interviews that I've done, especially like with Zach, his story was like the one that stuck with me mm-hmm. the most just because he goes through this hard life and is trying to better himself, but he keeps having these haunting nightmares and that are really like tormenting him and breaking him down. And then at the end of it, you he tells how like, you know, he met his wife and he bettered his life and now he has kids and he's living like he has a happy life. And he now he collects Star Wars stuff and does YouTube and things like that, yeah. you know? So it was a really good story of like somebody going through like this really dark path and then just rising up above that and yeah. finding like faith again and just being just beating that. So that's what yeah, I liked about that. On his own, his own journey that he experienced. Yeah, yeah, that one was wild. Then we've had, you know, Simon Sem's nerd, <laughs> the main man himself. Yeah. Man, he hopped on. That was awesome. We had Phil from Exploring with Phil on the recent one. Shared a bunch of EVPs. That was cool because I don't think we've had a bunch of EVPs be shared on the show. Yeah, that's before. always cool to get because. I mean, like when you're recording or you're doing an investigation, you want to capture something. Mm -hmm. And so when someone has, you know, something strange that they captured, it's so cool. It's so interesting to to be able to hear, you know, something that they experienced. Yeah. And what was cool is there's one, there was, there was one that he shared where it sounded like somebody saying cold. Mm-hmm. And 
he was like, yeah, and it kind of has like this weird tone to it um, while it's saying cold. And when I listened to it again, when we played it back again, it sounded like somebody like shivering, like cold, like shivering yeah. and saying cold. And then he's like, oh, wow. Like I never thought of it that way. <laughs> so it was a cool thing to yeah. like discover together on the show. Yeah. Um, you got animals Sorry, going crazy turtle. back there. Yeah, that's my turtle. <laughs> Hey, relax, my guy. We're recording. Thanks. There you go. <laughs> but yeah, we've had all of these, all of these things go on from like doppelgangers to just all kinds of, all kinds of crazy stuff. Things that I don't think we would, we would think we were going to talk about, like Tommy Knockers, little, mm-hmm. little goblin like troll things, you know? Yeah. From the like, mine, right? Those are the ones yeah. in the mine. Yeah. The mines in Colorado. Yeah. Yeah. And they yeah, were after kind of aggressive, were they? They were just like they would kind of warn candles and stuff. Yeah, they would and they would warn people about like something about to happen. Yeah, like a, a certain section about the cave in or something. Yeah. 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 I have said like so many times. Like <laughs> I just caught it now that I've been saying like over and over again. Did you put out that one you showed me? Um, oh, the video? The investigation video? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That dropped yesterday. Where you were saying well, Colorado? Yeah. Where I said, you oh, were no, like, that was, I say Colorado while we're talking. No, yeah, no, that one, that one was the, the, the haunted hotel Colorado. That was the last episode. <laughs> you were like, <laughs> I say Colorado one more time. Yeah. <laughs> Because they don't catch it until like after. <laughs> Again, right now when I said like after, <laughs> um, this is all stay in because I'm not cutting anything. Good. Uh, uh, but after everything that we have talked about, how have your your views changed in like the paranormal? Like when it comes to ghosts, because I think me and you we've we've had ghost like things, like spiritual things, like happen, like mm-hmm. like like uh, <laughs> uh we've had spiritual things happen that mm-hmm. have made us believers in that aspect now i'm just waiting for you to say it i know i know i've said it and now it's just gonna be pointed out but how has that changed your views from what we've talked about on here going from bigfoot to ufos to Tommy knockers and doppelgangers and all that craziness. It's, it's funny. I love when we talk about um, like cryptids that I don't know because then it's learning something new. But it's like every every story we read, it's so different from the last one. Like I said, nothing's ever the same. We could talk about ghost stories four or five, six times. And they're all different. We could talk about possession and each possession is is different. And so it's almost like cryptids in itself. Like you get, you're getting something new every time. And so honestly, the more we do this, the more excited I am. Because it's, it's teaching me something, which I'm not the smartest person, but I like to learn new things. And so I'm excited about that. And then I'm excited to just hear what kind of stuff we got in, you know, what kind of stuff um, you researched or what kind of stuff you sent me or what kind of stuff other people sent us. And it's cool to see the same, like how you, how you heard the EVV and and you, you sort of witnessed or you, you, from your perspective, you caught something that he didn't. Yeah. And so it's cool to hear these stories and sort of pick them apart and point out certain things that we notice because then we're, we're noticing new things and it turns just the story into something bigger. You know, it's, yeah. it's always cool. And so it has made me a lot more excited about the next episode, I guess. Yeah, mine has been um, a little bit of the opposite. 
Really? <laughs> yeah, I've become. I, I mean, I still believe in like ghost things. Mm-hmm. I've become less of a believer in cryptids. Okay. Um, from everything that I've like researched or that we've talked about. I mean, I love the stories. Mm-hmm. The stories are amazing, and getting people's firsthand encounters is even better. Mm-hmm. When we're when we have somebody bringing on that they they thought they saw a giant wolf walking across the street and then all of a sudden it stood up on two legs. Yeah. But from what I witnessed that goes on when people actually study these things is made me less of a believer. Like with that Coyote Peterson guy talking about his Bigfoot skull. Yeah. Like and then me seeing people believe it i was like come on guys like i know i know you don't like (laughs) come on or even when i see people now now that i know that that when somebody steps in like mud or something to leave an impression and it's wet around there or anything it will Uh erode and become more expanded and bigger that footprint will now look bigger Interesting. In these things. So then I'm just like, okay, I have seen a dog's footprint step in, I don't know, snow or mud after it rained here. Yeah. And then I've seen that the next week that I go to this house where I've seen the dog step into this mud, that paw print now looks giant. Yeah. Wow. That's cool. I didn't know that. So now I'm just kind of like... That makes sense because we see we see paw prints out in the field by my house all the time, and some of them look like way too big for a dog. Yeah, well, especially like in house. in desert, like it's gonna erode like even more, especially with the wind yeah. blowing. Like, yeah, but yeah. So I've gone like more of a more of a skeptic. I still love it all, but I've become more well, of a what skeptic. What it is is what it is is I think the it's the knowledge because a lot of the times it's ignorance sounds like an ugly word, but I don't think it is. So it's the ignorance of something that sort of makes you reach for straws almost like I had made a point on one of our stories about how if a, a regular person, okay. So if I see a bear, in the wild, I'm going to think that bear is massive. Like, that's not normal. That bear is huge. If yeah. a hunter or, you know, a, someone who um, has a bear sanctuary or something, someone who's familiar with bears. Who sees, sees it all the time. Bear, yeah. yeah. They're going to be like, oh, that's a normal sized bear. Or if anything, that's a small one. You know? It's the knowledge of it that completely changes how we see things. And so I think the yeah. fact that you study everything is, is sort of changing how you see it. See, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even like, I see, I hear so many people, and this is going to be me going off on like a rant mm-hmm. of things right now. But like, I see so many people say like, oh, I, I, I apply science to, to what I'm doing. I I approach it from a scientific point of view. Like, no, you're reading, you're reading a book that was written by someone else. What, what the way I see somebody who is applying the sciences to what they're studying is somebody who's going to also go out boots on the ground. Mm -hmm. Like, and I don't even do that as much with like the cryptid aspect. I can go out and do paranormal stuff. Um, and the way I go about everything is way different than other people who are going to use phone apps to try to do things. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I just don't like when people are like saying like, Oh, I could approach this scientifically, but you're sitting in your room just reading what somebody else wrote. <laughs> you're not, you're not um bringing anything new, new to it, which is why we're such, we're at this like standstill of, we still don't have any solid proof of Bigfoot. These other monsters like Mothman, Dogman, uh, 
I don't know, the Fresno Nightcrawlers. We don't have any solid mm-hmm. things of it because everybody just kind of is just rehashing. Yeah, I think everything. The biggest changes that that people can make is when you try. It's funny. The people who make the biggest impact basically are the ones who try to disprove it. Yeah. You know? know. Yeah, I get that. Because they they, they force themselves to uncover the truths about it. And maybe it changes their opinion. Maybe they find out, okay, that's actually real. Yeah. And I'm not, I'm not putting anything, anybody down in the aspect of like, if you, if you just read things and study things in the book, like, it's cool if you do that, but apply what you've learned, I guess, or, mm-hmm. or whatever, sense. man. I just like, because I, I deal with the social media aspect more than you do when it comes to mm-hmm. the podcast. Yeah. But they, they have now brought in like politics into, into that, into this crazy into this crazy world of the paranormal where like Mm. now some people don't even want you to talk about other cultures folklore because in some way you're not supposed to understand that because you're not from that culture. Yeah. But yeah. Like, but if we're all learning from it, we can, that's the only way you apply to certain stuff. That's the only way you can apply these things to these monsters. If you connect like, culture Mm -hmm. uh but yeah that's my just my stupid little rant i don't know anything (laughs) you know (laughs) but i just don't think like we should people people shouldn't be i don't know gatekeepers is that the right term yeah that works hopefully it didn't sound like i was gatekeeping but i just want to be able to like not just read something hopefully go out and apply what I've learned from the books out in the field. Yeah. Cause I would want a Bigfoot encounter. Yeah. Probably not dog man. In fact, to make a, a clear, uh, like yeah. to make it clear, you know, to reveal some things. Yeah. And it, if you, if you could see me, I don't know. This probably makes me sound like a jerk to like everybody. <laughs> but like, if you could see me, like when, when I'm looking through like social media and not from like the people that I follow. Cause I really like the people that I follow and that I've connected with. Mm-hmm. But when I'm just scrolling through other stuff, like on TikTok or something, I get so bothered with the fact that people believe anything <laughs> like just so, so, so bad. Like when I saw that coyote Peter- Peterson again, bringing him up, People were like, some. I saw people on TikTok saying, This is huge. This is huge. Mm. If this is real, this is huge. (laughs) No. It looks fake. Yeah. And then people still believed it. Like, the people still believe Todd Standing, who has put out recordings of Bigfoot. That's the one you showed me, right? That's the one you sent to me. Yeah. Yeah, that one looked bad. And people will still believe that, saying this is the most impressive evidence we've ever gotten. No, it was bad. So, <laughs> so those are my my gripes with being in in the paranormal. Like those are my gripes as of late. Uh, okay. But like I said, this is nothing to the people who have come on the show and shared their personal stories because. I will never take away from somebody's personal encounter, especially with how they, they speak about it and how much it's impacted them. Um, and then the people that I follow on Instagram, they're all, they're all awesome. But Everybody just, the, screw them. just the, just the random crazies, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's just, just a, like, There's people who build channels on on this stuff, and I mean, obviously us, but like, 
I feel like it, if I have to choose my words carefully. <laughs> <laughs> um, like if you're not trying to make an impact, I guess. That's my that's a yeah. big a big thing to me. If you're not trying to make an impact in what you're doing, then why are you doing it? Yeah, I mean you but can I just enjoy like, something, but like I feel, that's what I was gonna say. I feel like some people maybe just follow it just to follow. Yeah. Which is completely fine. Um But don't try it. If you're gonna be in it just to follow it and just because you enjoy it, don't go around I don't know, correcting people or telling them they don't know something. Or yeah. Because none of us know anything. Yeah. Here. Like Nobody don't try has to correct someone anything. when your evidence yeah. is based on someone else's evidence. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. That I've had sense. somebody do that with just my last, with the last video where I investigate the paranormal objects. Somebody left a comment saying, not believable, bruh. <laughs> okay. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, okay, I, don't know. I wasn't doing it so that you believe it. I mean, in 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 show. my intro to the video, I say haunted objects in quotation, you know, because mm-hmm. I didn't even believe that they were actually haunted. Yeah, like we don't ever shun a story. If someone Mm-mm. like listener stories, we don't ever like be like, oh, that's obviously fake. Nah. We'll state our opinion on it. We'll point out some things, but we're never like that person's a psycho you know we we yeah, listen never. to the story we do exactly what it's what the title is we listen to the story and we talk about it yeah and i mean we i mean we are people that are not we're not heavy believers we love the subject and have dived in and have started doing the research and talking to people who have these encounters and then but we don't like me. It's the point. Yeah, and then me going out and investigating certain areas or objects that have been sent here. Like that's me trying to apply something, even if I don't believe like some one of these things, you know? Yeah. So I mean it's a lot of learning. I mean it's been two years in and we still got a lot of learning. Hopefully yeah, I didn't I um minds were open to it. Yeah, hopefully I didn't offend anybody by saying what I said, but if I did, what are you going to do about it? I'm just kidding. <laughs> what can you do, man? <laughs> you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. But yeah, it's been two years. Two yeah. years, brother, man. We have- yeah, what are, uh, you didn't tell me your favorites. Oh, I, well, I said my favorite was was the one with Zach. That was my favorite one. Um, I really loved uh, the possession of Michael Taylor. That one was yeah. just because I like true crime. So it was a combination of true crime and paranormal. And then um, our most popular episode, which is the Sierra sounds and other strange noises in the woods, which talked about like the samurai chatter that was caught in the Sierra Nevada mountains um, which just sounds like samurai chatter or like l- extremely loud gibberish caveman talk. Um, cause I don't know if saying samurai chatter is like politically correct or not. Sounds cool. Yeah. Um, and then other strange noises, like people hearing like their mother's voice out in the woods when their mom is inside. Uh, like those something are like always that. creepy to me, dude. Those are always creepy to me, Man, especially the, ones... the one with like the little stories of like um, the sons upstairs or something. And then he hears his mom shout from downstairs. And then as soon as he walks out to go, the mom comes out from one of the rooms upstairs and she's like, don't go. I heard it, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that those was one of my favorites. Yeah. creep me out. <laughs> Yeah, super creepy. Those mm-hmm. are the, like just you saying it gave me chills for this that yeah, split no, second. <laughs> <laughs> it's so creepy, like just to have the other actual person be like, I heard it too. Yeah. Don't. 
Like, don't go near that. Yeah, That's those crazy. are those are some of my favorites from there. I mean, I mean, there are so many, but those are like some of my favorites. And then Zach's being the most recent one. Um, that story just really stuck with me. Now we're buds, so. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> That's another beauty of this is you meet a lot of people and you, you know, you make some friends and connections and you get to know a lot of these people and their stories. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, they, um, they have been very welcoming, like with, with Greg, who runs all the weird. He's invited me to his crypto casters show where he just gathers people and has them talk about certain subjects. Yeah. And he's invited me on there multiple times, which is great. And then you meet new people through that. Um, and it's this kind of community in Instagram. I mean, you have the bigger name people and then you have people who are doing it because they genuinely love the subject, which is like, we're, where, where like we stand, and then the people that I've met stand. They genuinely love the the subject. They study it. They go out and do investigations. They visit certain areas, and it's awesome. I think it's another thing that keeps us going for the show. It's like mm. the more we connect, uh, the more we build up, build upon. Yeah, because then you get you get. I mean, you get interviews for the show you get to go on other people's shows and be interviewed or even just talk um different collaborations and stuff like that and and you also get like new perspectives on how they see certain things um exactly yeah i've got i've gone through stuff um hidden in the shadows podcast with um with isaac and megan um Mm -hmm. I was on one of their episodes where it was just a paranormal round table and it was just so many people with different methods, like people who, people who did use apps and then actually got like connected things with the app. And then it ended up working for them. Whereas other people, yeah. it doesn't work for them. The app is just the app. So uh, you, you see different methods between different people in that way. Uh, mm-hmm. But yeah, that is our that is our two years, and for the next two years, we are going to be doing more of this video yeah. thing. Uh, we'll be doing more investigations. Hopefully, I can get and meet somebody here and maybe do like a Bigfoot expedition. That would be cool. That would be cool. Um, hopefully, I don't get attacked by like a mountain lion or something or a bear. Uh, I mean, <laughs> What a way to go out. <laughs> uh, Oscar, he was eaten by a bear. Yeah. A bear so of all bad. things. The things that he was, uh, he had so many things in common with. Yeah. <laughs> it was a polar bear. <laughs> yeah. <In> Colorado. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, we'll be doing that. We'll do, we'll plan out our jail house. Yeah. Our jail house rock um, investigation. <laughs> And yeah, I want to just thank everybody who has listened, new listeners, old listeners, people who've listened from the beginning when the audio was complete garbage um, until now, the video era of induced fear. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a, new, a new step. Yeah, the new step. Um, and yeah, do you have any other words you want to say to the people? Yeah. Um, I would love to know who's been here from the beginning. Like, sort of a mom, mom. probably. I, was I hope mom's the, mom's <laughs> the our only listener. We're talking to nobody yeah. but mom. Right? Hi, mom. <laughs> I did. <laughs> sorry uh, for sorry for cussing. Did you cuss? I don't know. Probably. Shit. Okay, there we go. <laughs> I guess all the time. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, just a big thank you to all of them for 
all the downloads, all the listens, all the ratings, all that stuff. Super yeah, it's more really, than appreciated. Like, it's not just that, okay, we see what certain episodes, you know, get more views than others. Um, then we kind of could adjust to what people like. But it's more like we get an understanding of how it all works, you know? Mm-hmm. We... No, it helps us. Know. Yeah, yeah, it helps us. It teaches us, and it shows us that the work that we do, that you do, is appreciated. You know, yeah. that all all that you put into it is is noticed by all these people, and not just our friends and family, but people we've never met before. Yeah, people from states we've never visited. You know, it's so it's so wild how far it's gone. Yeah, I can't I can't believe it. I never thought it would become anything, really. But it has. And you know, I'm grateful for the ride having you on here, having Tate yeah. on here, having Seth in the beginning, you know, like it's been a it's been a wild ride. And then everybody who has come on to share their stories, like I have so this, much uh, space on the side of my screen. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, <laughs> you're so good. Straight. It's literally <laughs> just because I want to show my spiders, but they're nowhere close no, they're, enough. There's not one right there. There's not one stuck stuck to the wall there. Yeah, the there. pink toe. There you go. See, there you go. It's one of the bunch, but... <laughs> <laughs> Don't be sorry. Time. It's the end of the episode anyway, so... Yeah, I just realized how <laughs> far off the screen I was. I was like, man, I'm really out there. <laughs> okay, sorry. But yes, thank you to everybody, everybody who yeah. has made this possible. It's a real uh, motivation when I see people liking stuff and mm-hmm. coming on and all that's who wants to come on. So, yeah, we appreciate you all. Yeah. And as always, the way I always end every show, don't forget to ask questions and face your fears. Thanks for joining me and Alex once again on this episode of this two year anniversary episode of Induced Fear. Bye, guys. Bye.